Okay, good evening everyone. Uh, welcome to today's meeting of the Planning Applications Committee. I do make it five o'clock so we'll make a start. We'll go straight on to the agenda. Item number one is the evacuation procedure. Uh, we've got no alarms uh, planned, no practice alarms planned for today. Uh, so if they do go off we'll treat it as the real thing and if you can leave this room by the doors on either side of the chamber and uh, go down the front steps and we'll meet across the road by the Yorkshire Bank. Please don't use the lift and if anybody uh, needs any help, any assistance in getting out, give us a shout, we'll make sure that's done. Um, it's also a good time to remind people to either put your phones on silent or to turn them off and to tell people that, as is the normal practice, the meeting is being recorded by the council and it normally goes out on YouTube within a couple of days of it being done, if the technology allows. Uh, any way you like along there. Um, item number two... Item number two is to receive... Apologies for absence. I've had, uh, I believe we've had apologies from Councillor. Uh, I'll put Wilson Watkins and Lloyd. Wendy's there. Uh, that it. That's correct. Apologies from Councillor Watkins. Substitute Councillor Apologies from Councillor Lloyd. Substitute Councillor Watkins. Apologies from Councillor Pandere. Okay, item number three is to uh, confirm the minutes of the meeting held on the 22nd of October. Are people happy that I sign those? Thank you. That takes us on to item number four, to receive any declarations of disclosable pecuniary and other interests in accordance with the Member's Code of Conduct. Councillor Jackson. Thank you, Chair. Could you put your microphone on, please? No, if the light's not on, it's not on. Working this side, Chair. Pardon? They're working this side. What, the light's the coming? On, yeah. No, the light's on the end of your stick. Do you want to just have a look, Wendy? I don't know what's... Yes, if you could just make sure that all the lights are switched off. Well, we don't know because they're not on. <laughs> Sorry about this, folks. Mine's working, but I'll... It, one I prepared earlier. There's always something wrong with it, isn't there? That's you asking. <laughs> Somebody try now. Can... Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Heard something. Just one last try, Wendy, and then we'll just have to move on otherwise. 
It's all right, we'll have conspiracy theories saying that, that they don't want us to hear what's being said. Councillor Jackson. Mr Mayor, I'll try all three. I'm not the Mayor, Councillor Jackson. I'm the Chair of Planning. Okay, mine's my own. It's working there. That's next year. Right. Oh. Thank you, uh, Chairman. Because my uh, declarations of interest are not printed on the agenda as I'm, as I'm a substitute, can I just declare uh, an interest in regard to my husband's employment with this council in SLM, um, Sports and Leisure Management, for which I've received a limited dispensation. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? No? We can move on to item number five, which is declarations of contact. I believe all members were forwarded something in regard to the Western Lane application. Yes? Maybe not the substitutes, but... Um, um, oh, Councillor Smith. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Same item, item two. I have spoken to um, residents about this item, but haven't disclosed any voting intention. Yeah, that's not... OK, right, OK. Um, item number six. Applications for planning permission where the public have in indicated a, a desire to speak. If I just run through that uh, with you, I'm sure some have been here before, but uh, under the Constitution you're allowed three minutes to speak. So what will happen is when the item comes up, the officer will present the report and then I will take people that are listed um, on our paperwork to speak. Uh, so, as I say, you get three minutes. Once the <coughs> egg timer goes off, I will stop you from speaking because that will be your, your three minutes. So, to be fair to everybody, I'm pretty strict on, on that one. However, following on from that, members may want to ask any points of clarification. It will only be to clarify something that you've, that you've said within your uh, three minutes. Uh, and then the officers may want to come back on on anything that's arisen from that. And then once somebody's uh, moved something and seconded it, uh, the, we can then debate the matter. Uh, we normally debate the matter and make a decision on the same day. Uh, not always. Sometimes items are deferred for site visits or for more information, but normally we make the decision on the day. OK, uh, just before we start on item number one, I can tell... Uh, members, it's, it's also on your addendum anyway. Item 3 has been withdrawn at the request of the applicant. OK then, Dan, and item number 1, Land off Burbage's Lane, Bedworth, or Exor, whichever year. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> this application is for a residential development of up to 85 houses, with the associated open space, drainage, landscaping and the vehicular access. It is an outline application with all the detailed matters reserved except access. The site is located on the corner of Wheelwright Lane and Burbage's Lane and spans the corner creating two frontages which are split by the residential property at number 2 Burbage's Lane. The site comprises 3.24 hectares of agricultural land and lies roughly 2.5 kilometres southeast of Bedworth. The site was previously in the Greenbelt but this area was removed from the Greenbelt by the adoption of the Borough Plan and it forms part of the non-strategic housing allocations of policy DS5. The site also includes an additional piece of land marked blue on the plan here, which is, which is to be used for biodiversity offsetting. The key issues to assess in the determination of this application are the principle of development, visual amenity and landscape character, residential amenity, Affordable housing, highway safety, archaeology, flood risk, contamination, noise, ecology and biodiversity, trees and arboriculture, green infrastructure improvements and any planning obligations to be sought. 
In regard to the principle of developing the site for residential properties, the site is an allocated housing site within the borough plan. Policy DS5 sets out that between this site, NUN 286, and the neighbouring site, NUN 317, there should be around 127 houses. This outline for up to 85 dwellings will be consistent with the proposed numbers in the plan. It is considered that the principle of development is therefore acceptable. The reserved matters of scale and appearance are reserved for consideration at a later date. So we are, we are assessing the impact of the principle of the residential dwellings on this site. A landscape and visual appraisal has been submitted which shows the site lies within the Arden and Kersley urban fringe and highlights that the key characteristics of this land is frequent hedgerow trees, linear bands of built development and the prominent large warehouses and the tree belt associated with the A444 and M6 corridors. Apologies. Overall, it is considered there will be no significant harm on visual amenity or landscape character, although obviously the details of appearance will be considered at a later date. In respect of the impact on residential amenity, again, the proposed layout is purely indicative at this stage and it is a reserved matter for later on. It is considered, though, that with care, a layout could be submitted which would adequately protect the amenity of new properties and those surrounding existing properties. The proposed... Oh, sorry. The proposal will provide for the required 25% affordable housing as set out in the borough plan. The applicant has agreed this and it will be included in any legal agreement. Access is a matter being considered here with this outline. County highways were consulted and have no objections to the scheme. They did request conditions and some planning obligations and these have been included as part of the recommendation. It is considered that with the requested conditions and the obligations in the legal agreement, there should be no severe impact on highway safety. County Archaeology had an, had an initial objection to the scheme, but removed this following further work. The proposal is considered compliant with policy B4 of the Borough Plan, which contains details on archaeolog archaeological sites. The applicant submitted a flood risk assessment with the application and this was assessed by the county flood risk team. They responded with no objection in this regard and recommended conditions. With the addition of these conditions, it is considered that there will be no significant harm by way of impact from flood risk. In regard to contamination, the council's environmental health team were consulted and have no objections subject to the standard contamination conditions being attached and this is felt to be acceptable. In respect of noise, a noise report was submitted with the proposal and this was again scrutinised by the environmental health team who have no objection in this regard uh, subject to conditions. In regard to the impact on biodiversity, both MBBC Parks and Warwickshire Wildlife Trust were consulted on the scheme. Both of these consultees were happy with the latest iteration of the biodiversity calculations and conditions would be added to ensure that adequate measures are taken to protect ecology. It is also, also proposed that there be a scheme of survey work and maintenance to any land used for biodiversity offsetting. And this is to be included in the legal agreement. The proposal will, re will result in the loss of some trees, but this will only be at the proposed access point off Burbage's Lane. The tree report identified only one Category A tree and this will be retained. The recommended conditions will ensure that details for the protection of trees and their root protection areas will be adequately dealt with. In regard to green infrastructure, a footpath next to the site is to be brought back into use and the county footpath team are content with this. Plans originally showed a locally equipped area for play, which has now been removed and monies towards existing facilities will be played instead, which MBBC Parks are happy with. MBBC Parks have objected to the indicative layout as the footpaths within the site are not shown in enough details. But since this is only an indicative layout and will not form part of the approved plans, it is felt by officers that these concerns can be adequately dealt with via conditions and any future reserve matters. Various planning obligations are sought. These include monies for play and open space, sports development, George Elliott Hospital, cycling and walking route infrastructure, contributions to the strategic <coughs> cycle routes, Warwickshire Police support and the 25% affordable housing. The recommendation is one of approval, subject to conditions and a legal agreement, as set out on the agenda and the addendum. Thank you, Chair. OK, thanks, Darren. And our first speaker, <coughs> Councillor Brown. Not here. 
Councillor Gilbert. Uh, thanks, Chair. Um, Chair, I'm obviously not a uh, planning expert. In fact, you probably know me long enough to know that I'm not a, really an expert on anything. So I know that you have professionals who give guidance on this and their recommendations in here, but I do disagree with them. Um, I don't really believe this land should be being built upon in the first place. I don't believe there's a necessity for it. But looking at this application and that area that we all probably know in this room is that it will um, have a detrimental effect on the traffic flow on Wilwright Lane and will increase it to a point that I believe could be unbearable for the residents. There is already issues there on the county catch in that area, as you know, and have to deal with things in relation to that road. We've already put some uh, crossings in because of the traffic flow near the school. This will have an impact on that. And I believe that is a major consideration which this report uh, believes is not an issue and neither does County Highways, and I disagree with them on that. I also believe we don't need 85 houses there at this point because I think I may be corrected on this, that there is enough planning out there that if was built would fulfil the requirements that we need to make sure that developments like this don't need to be developed. The area cannot take it. Uh, I believe it would be wrong to allow it to go ahead. And I also have another concern, Chair. That obviously Burbage's Lane is closed off at the bottom and I just wonder whether or not we will see in the future that that road being opened up because of some traffic issue, we need to alleviate it from the Wilwright Lane end. And then that will develop then a rat run through that road, which is why it was cut off, and to try and stop that from happening. Now, I know these are all hypotheticals and if, buts and maybes, but we do see developments like this take place, and we see them evolve through time. And the initial complaints and the initial concerns that were ignored at the time of development actually become true. And I just believe it would be wrong for me not to have come here today and said this. I'm not anti-development, but I believe this would be wrong in that spot and at this time. Uh, but as I said, I'm not a planning expert, and, and I know that the report suggests otherwise for this. But I believe it will have an effect on the area, and one which we could stop by not allowing to happen. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Are there any points of clarification? No. This is Jake's. Thank you, Chair. It's the, if you press the large button on your console, please. Thank you, Chair. I'm Isabel Jakes. I'm now the Vice Chair of the Ash Green Residents Association 2018. And I'm here tonight speaking on behalf of some of the residents of Burbage's Lane who live close to this site and who were unaware that this meeting was taking place tonight. In this instance, it appears that neither the developer or the council felt it necessary to remind the residents of Burbage's Lane and others about this planning meeting tonight. Whether it's binding in law or not, some, or indeed the majority of developers and councillors, do inform their residents at the earliest possible stage of planning as it leads to a more considered and understanding approach with those concerned residents. From an association's point of view, I am now informed that we are on the consultation data list and the weekly emailing list of applications, and we're very grateful for this. As to what is being discussed tonight, access and entry, the following are the concerns of those residents nearest to the site and the T-junction with Wheelwright Lane. Their concerns are about the traffic build-up at peak times and the loss of access to and from their homes, which will, be co which will cause a build-up of increased distress to the Burbage's Lane residents. A, from parking in the road from parents and others dropping off and picking up pupils to and from Wheelwright School, the build-up of CO2 and poor air quality, which will only increase with the addition of vehicles entering and exiting this site to Burbage's Lane, which could be up to approximately 85 point, uh, times two vehicles and probably more at peak times. Therefore, they would draw the council and developers' attention to the fact that the planning practice guidance has now been updated on air quality. The air quality section of planning practice guidance has been completely revised, with it now advising that councils seek opportunity to improve air quality through plan making and development management. 
The residents would like to know when this was last done in Burbage's Lane and that the council will ensure there is an up-to-date report in any pre- or full planning application. The association has also been made aware of residents' concern of the proposed Spine Road and asked where situated and for what reason. They feel there is not enough information, that's the residents, on this and feel if there is any, it should be made more accessible. Thank you for listening and hope the residents' points will be addressed by both the council and the developer as stated above. Thank you. Okay, thank you. If you just press that button off again. Thank you. Are there any points of clarification? No. Mr. Mr. Pearce? Confused me there. I didn't know whether John Pierce or Harry Slam. Uh, Mr. Pierce, thank you, Chair. Uh, Chair, members of the committee, um, thank you for allowing me to speak um, to you in support of the application before you. The application is submitted on land at Wilwright Lane and Burbage's Lane. The site is part of a non strategic housing allocation referred to as NUN 286 NUN 317 in the recently adopted borough plan. As you'll be aware, the borough plan sets out the preferred spatial strategy for accommodating its housing needs over the plan period and through the course of the preparation of the plan, identified appropriate sites that the council considered were suitable to be developed for housing. As such, the proposed use of the site for residential development wholly accords with the council's intentions of where it wants to, to, wants to direct housing to meet the needs within the borough. The application therefore seeks to direct housing where the council has decided it is needed and therefore is fully in accordance with the council's aspirations. As such, the principle of residential development on the site is considered acceptable. The applicant is now seeking outline planning permission on part of the allocation for residential development of up to 85 dwellings along with approval of the proposed access and main estate road through the site. All other matters are reserved for future determination. A new priority junction is proposed onto Burbage's Lane, which the Highway Authority have confirmed is, safe and acceptable, is, a, is a safe and acceptable access arrangement for the site. A policy compliant affordable housing contribution is proposed with the size and tenure of units agreed with the Council's Affordable Housing Officer and which, we will, and which will be secured through a legal agreement. An illustrative layout has been submitted that demonstrates how the site can be laid out. An acceptable layout can therefore be achieved at the detailed design stage that will ensure that new dwellings do not impact on the residential amenity of existing or future residents. The Highway Authority have confirmed that the pro development will not adversely affect the local highway network and have also sought a number of contributions toward local highway and cycling improvements, including a contribution to the Walking Safe Routes to School programme, which the applicant has agreed to pay. Furthermore, highway impacts were fully considered as part of the preparation of the local plan uh, and were therefore um, and, and they were therefore considered acceptable before the confirmation of the allocation and adoption of the plan. All environmental and technical matters have been addressed, working in conjunction with your officers, and appropriate conditions agreed to ensure the de development can be, can be implemented. As such, there are no outstanding issues that would prevent the delivery of the site. The site is therefore deliverable and will make a significant contribution to the provision of market and affordable housing in the borough. A number of other benefits will arise through the development, through local construction jobs and increased demand and spend on local services, as well as improvements to existing public open space, along with walking and cycling infrastructure in the vicinity. As such, the proposed development is considered to be wholly, is to wholly accord with the adopted development plan for the borough and will deliver new housing where the council has planned it and that's and as such, the support of the council is sought through the Grants of Planning Commission. OK, thank you, Mr Pearce. Are there any points of clarification? No. Darren, anything you need to come back on at the moment? In which case, to enable debate to take place, can I move the recommendation, which is to grant planning permission? Is that seconded? Seconded. Who said that? Thank you. Any member? <coughs> Councillor Tromans. Thank you, Chair. Um, Chair, I, I wonder if you wouldn't mind um, getting the officers to clarify a couple of things because I'm a bit confused with this. It, it, it seems as though this, uh, the report is saying that, you know, because the borough plan was passed, this is land that's included in the borough plan 
uh, and, and counts towards the target and all the rest of it. But then it's described as a non-strategic site. Can we just pull up DS5 and can, can somebody point to me and say whether it is actually in one of the HSGs and included in the borough plan numbers or is this a, what we call a windfall site or something? Because um, obviously Darren, that could makes you a big at that point, please, before we... Um, yeah, so it's not a windfall site. It forms part of the allocations of the borough plan. It's not a strategic site, so it's not a HSG site. There's the strategic sites, so they're much bigger. Um, the the non-strategic sites tend to be smaller sites that are dotted around the borough. So they still form part of the allocations. They form part of the housing numbers. Um, so they, they are allocated. Just, they're allocated to the same degree as the strategic sites. They just tend to be smaller. Any other member? Councillor Wilson. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, the report does have... Um, is slightly confusing to members of the public who wouldn't necessarily um, know on page 18, and I only got it from listening to the officer's report, where it says, objection from MBBC Parks, but then says no response from MBBC Parks, which is um, slightly confusing. Um, the point I wish to make, Chair, the main point... Is I'm slightly concerned about particularly two reports, um, which are, if I find them here, the noise assessment report and the transport statement report, both of which are dated, well, one is October 2017 and the other one is December 2017. So one is over two years old and one is just coming up for two years old. And this is just about the time when the borough plan in its original form went through to the inspector. And as we know, a number of changes were made throughout the inspection process. Um, another strategic site was added, so that won't be in the transport statement because it won't have fed in to um, the transport modelling about that, what that would do around that neck of the woods. We know that additional roads have been put in throughout the transport network, for, addition, for example, HSG2, although it's a, a, a way away, it is still on the A444 network. And there is supposed to be a additional road throughout the HSG2 uh, estate. And also since 2017, we have seen the expansion of the M6, which is only just around the corner, with putting um, four lanes on either side. And I don't believe, unless officers can give me some reassurance, that all those changes from the borough plan and all the traffic impacts and assessments and changes which were made by the inspector and the updates to life in general in that area uh, over two years have been taken into account. Unless officers can give me that assurance, Chair, I don't think we have enough up-to-date evidence to make an informed decision on this, because we know there have been changes since uh, October 2017 and December 2017. And therefore, yes, the principle of development has unfortunately been established by virtue of the passing of the borough plan. That isn't a battle we can refight um, again, so that isn't an aspect. But I want to make sure, before I vote on this, that the residents in that area who will move in will not be adversely impacted by the additional noise from any of the changes which have been made over the two years since that report, and also the transport statement. Because also from uh, the original submission of the borough plan, if I remember rightly, the housing... Um, targets went up from originally stated to around, but just I think it's just over 15,000 yeah, from 15, memory, yeah, that and that wasn't what was originally submitted and wouldn't have been originally put in the transport statement. So, unless someone can convince me otherwise, I'm minded to vote against and request a deferral until those two reports are updated, mm -hmm. because I think that's in the best interests of the existing and the new residents of that estate. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. Darren, do you want to come back on anything there now yeah. before bringing bring other speakers in? Or? There isn't a lot to add, other than, obviously, those particular documents were scrutinised by various experts. I'm not a highways expert. That's why we consult with highways, obviously. Um, they've, they've been deemed acceptable by county highways and by the county floodways team and the Environment Agency. Um, so without going into, obviously, great detail into those reports, that, that's as much as I can add to that. OK. Councillor Graham. Thank you, Chair. There's three points that I'd like um, to bring up and uh, some that I'd like clarified. On page 32 of the report, <laughs> there's a greyed-out area, and I can't make it out because of the way it's been printed, 
but it says proposed something, but I can't make out what the second word is. And now most of this land is people's back gardens. So I'd like to know what is proposed for that within this, especially since part of this isn't actually in the allotted um, site that you can see on there. It's people's back gardens. So I'd like to know what the second word on that is, first of all. Uh, Secondly, uh, I note that um, when it was uh, describing the nature of this rural area, it mentions warehouses, but there aren't any warehouses on this side of the A444 uh, in this part of Ash Green, the nearest ones are uh, the um, ones on the big industrial estate between there and Kersley. So I don't think that accurately describes this area of Ash Green, which has always been very rural. Uh, and the third point I'd like to raise is that uh, when this planning application was submitted a year and seven months ago, it doesn't take into account the additional strategic sites in Hawkesbury that was added a few months later. Uh, we, and in uh, the report for that <laughs> Hawkesbury site, it refers to the schools nearby in Ash Green being the nearest ones uh, to that area and being within that catchment area. So it would have an increased traffic effect on Wheelwright Lane due to the locations of the schools there. So uh, I don't believe that um, the uh, information from highways from that a year and a half ago is current because of that added strategic site. So, like Councillor Wilson, and I'd be happy to second his request for a deferral for more information, uh, I'd like to defer for that reason. Uh, And also I'd like clarification on what the second word on page 32 under the proposed is. Cover that now, Darren, I can, yep. It says proposed carriageway. It's referring to the road that that goes in. It's not not referring to the grey out area to the bottom. Okay. Councillor Longdon. Thank you, Chair. I think we're in danger of going into a different area because we're only here to discuss an outline application for access. Uh, and all these other things might be uh, okay when and if we ever get a full application. Uh, and it's not, I don't think, appropriate to talk about those things at this point in time. I do have some questions about the access because that's what I con- concentrated on. On the Wheelwright Lane side, there are three access points shown. Two of them, I think, go to properties, about three properties, whether they face, the, yeah, they must face towards Wheelwright Lane, I, I assume. Uh, but one, according to my plans anyway, is for emergency services. Now, it's old school. Um, it used to be requirement when there was 50 or more properties built on, a, on an estate. But unfortunately, it doesn't show... It's got arrows on it, but it doesn't show any sort of road. And I don't know if you get a fire engine up there or what. Uh, and that's quite concerning because it could... It could, unless it was gated off for emergency services only... Um, be used as an access into the estate, uh, which is which is not mentioned or anywhere I can find the report about how it would operate as an emergency access. Um, these are on page 35 and 34, 35. So it's it's a bit strange with the main but the main access uh, coming off Burbage's Lane. Um, but how on earth is that going to work? Because it also goes into a hammerhead. Well, there's lots of hammerheads on this side, isn't there? But it goes into that hammerhead uh, along the back of the properties in Woodford, Woodford Close. So it's, uh, it's a bit strange. Uh, and I know it's only indicative at this point in time, but I would like to know how that access is going to work uh, when and if... Uh, we ever get a full application. Yeah, thank, I mean, I'll just back up on what you say. There's nothing worse for us as a planning committee to get an outline application that's got indicative drawings on, on it because it, it's hardly an outline. And uh, personally, I think it should go back to being an outline applications and not ones with indicative drawings. Um, Councillor Llewellyn Nash. Thank you, Chair. Um, My main concern is um, about the highways and the traffic in this area. Um, Quite often, 
when you go down this road, there's already double-sided parking. Um, as we've mentioned, uh, Burbage's Lane is just one way, so you get people turning around not knowing where they're going. But you've also got the two schools there, one which hasn't been mentioned, which surprises me, and that's the School for Disabled Children and Impaired Children. Now, um, they have blind children there, uh, they have ambulances coming and going, which I know because I have colleagues at work there, and it, 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 it makes up for a, busy, a very busy road. You've got uh, two, two garage sites there, which have always got cars parked outside rather than actually on their garage land, and at the end of the day, it's a very narrow road. If there are any problems on the A Trouble 4 or the roundabout um, going up towards the M6, people always cut through that um, real right lane and it gets very, very congested. You're looking at a, a plan that would, um, is looking for 85 properties. You've got at least 85 cars, I would say, plus half of those. Most people have two cars these days. And it, I, I just cannot see how the highways could think that um, it was okay that there was enough traffic flow that th things would be safety minded when you've got two schools with children some that are impaired garages coming and going um, and it really concerns me thank you any other member councillor jackson thank you chair i'd like to know um, on what grounds the Highway Authority have said no objection. Was that based knowing the current planning uh, borough plan position? Because it seems to me that if we don't have professional objection from Warwickshire County Council, we are going to struggle to object based on highways objections and that seems from what members are saying to be the major concern here yes will right lane is congested uh, just before nine o'clock when children start school and it is congested at close of school time the rest of the time i'm sure local people will know there is a free flow of traffic in that area and the same considerations about school traffic are in up and down the borough outside every school at those particular times. So I suppose what I really want to know is when did highways give their no objection details to the authority? Was it in light of the borough plan as adopted? Or was it, as has been suggested by some members, perhaps before the borough plan was adopted? Thank you, Chair. Darren? Uh, just double checked as uh, you were asking the question. It was August 19 that they responded with no objection. Um, so it was obviously after the adoption of the plan. Okay, thank you. <coughs> right, we're getting um, to. No, you've already spoken, Councillor Graham. We've had a lot of debate on it. Get... No, Councillor Graham. Um, the one thing I'm concerned of, we have to remember that we are a planning applications committee. We're not here to rejig the borough plan on an ad hoc basis. The borough plan's been adopted by this council after going through a, a full inspection process. The amount of houses proposed on this site, although it's outlined, that could, could change, but again, it's given us an indicative amount. Um, <coughs> that has been considered by the inspector and adopted by this council. County highways, and I'm surprised there's, P, there's members of this council that are also members of the county council, and I would have thought they could have approached their highway officers if, they, you know, if the concerns were at that thing. But we do have to bear in mind, and it's something that does great with me to a certain extent, we do have to bear in mind that if we refuse planning applications for non-planning reasons or against officers' advice, we have got to have proper reasons for it because we're likely to get hit by appeal costs. Now, they wouldn't be to the county highways people, they would be to us as a, as a borough. Um, I'm not saying that's always the case. If we've got proper planning reasons to refuse against officers' advice, I'll always support that. Um, I believe that the Residents Association at the time of the inspection made representations 
to the inspector. I, I think I was actually there at the time when they, they did that. Um, and the, the question I was going to ask has just been asked and Darren's confirmed it. The, actually, the, the highway, uh, highway situation was an up-to-date advice. So, Darren, anything else before we move on? Come back on, Jeff. Okay. What I... In, what I... In, what I... In, what I... No, okay then. There was, there was other people that made the same representations. Oh, yeah, and there was a gentleman as well, as I could recall. Um, what I intend to do is I'm going to take the vote on the officer's recommendation because that was moved and seconded. It'll either win or fail. If it fails, then clearly something else will have to come forward. So it's been moved and seconded to grant planning permission subject to a legal agreement and the conditions printed. All those in favour of that? And against? I make that six all. So with my casting vote, that is, that is approved. Just bear in mind, the detail will be coming back to this committee at some point. Okay, thank you. If we can move on to item number two, 25 Western Lane. When you're ready, Darren. Yep. <clears throat> this application is for the erection of one dwelling on land to the site of 25 Western Lane, Bulkington. The site is currently part of the domestic garden of 25 Western Lane and is bounded by the public footpath to the northeast, the properties on Hemsworth Drive to the southeast, and the rest of 25 Western Lane's curtilage to the south and southwest. The site fronts onto Western Lane and is accessed via the large open corner. The street scene is mixed with two-storey properties, bungalows, hip roofs and gable roofs, all present in the vicinity. The key issues to assess in the determination of this application are the principle of the development, the impact on visual amenity, the impact on residential amenity and the impact on highway safety. The site is part of the domestic garden of 25 Western Lane, which is a two-storey semi-detached house. The area is characterised by residential uses and has a suburban feel despite it being close to the edge of the countryside. The land is not allocated within the borough plan for any particular use and would be considered a windfall site. And given the guidance in the National Planning Policy Framework, there is a presumption in favour of sustainable development. <clears throat> the street scene is very mixed with a variety of house styles, ages and design features. The street scene is open with the wide corner of Western Lane and the footpath with, which follows the pattern of the houses and creates a large lay-by type feature on the corner. The site is very close to 25 Western Lane which is a semi-detached house. It is proposed for the dwelling to be set back from 25 but forward of 25A, the nearby bungalow. The, the design is to feature a gabled roof with a gable storm porch to front and a good amount of de detailing to break up the facade. Overall, it is considered that the impact on visual amenity is not significant. The two neighbouring residential properties are number 25 and 25A Western Lane. Um, if you look at the plan, 25 is obviously number. 25A is this, this bungalow here that's, that's separated from the site by the footpath. Um, the impact on these two properties is not considered to be significant given that the distant standards of the residential design guide are met. To the rear are properties on Hemsworth Drive. Again, the distant standards set out in the design guide are met and therefore it is not, con not considered that there will be any significant harm to the amenity of these existing neighbours. County highways were consulted and raised no objection to the proposal. There are to be two car parking spaces at the front of the property and this is deemed acceptable. In conclusion, the proposal is recommended for approval subject to the conditions set out on the agenda. Thank you.
Can I, can I just, sorry, sorry. Yeah. can you just close that door? I yeah. can't kind of hear because of the background noise. Mr. Alson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thanks for allowing me to speak. Uh, I understand I've only got three minutes. Um, my objection is not so much an objection as just a, for some points of clarity, please. Um, I own the property behind the proposed dwelling, as you can see on the plan. Um, the, the border, or the way that the boundaries laid out on the, on the drawings, is not quite as it is in reality, but hey, that's, I guess that's live. Um, the bit that uh, my first objection is primarily um, what's going to happen to the, the two hedgerows, one that board, the long one that borders the, the property that's being developed and the footpath, and then the one, obviously, the more important one from my point of view is the one across the back of our house, which is the, the two plans. Okay? It's not clear on the plans what the developer's intentions for those is. We consider it to be a, a little wildlife-type haven, and there's some indicative species in there, um, and it's, it's a long-standing hedgerow. I understand from a communication I've had with um, our MP that if a um, hedgerow is more than 20 metres long or thir and 30 years old, then we need to seek planning permission, or there should be seeking planning permission to remove that hedge. Um, I'm just looking for reassurance that that hedge is going to be minimally disruptive, really. I understand that, obviously, some of that hedge needs to be removed because the house is going to go right up, on, as I understand, look at the plans, up to that footpath. There's some slight concern there with, obviously, how works are going to be undertaken, scaffolding, trenches dug, etc., as to, as to undertaking that. Um, there is some minor development happening at the property at 25 at the moment, where there's a, um, a, um, sort of a, an extension being built on the back um, um, with various, uh, varying amounts of disruption. Um, and so the last, the, the last little bit is obviously it makes the plan makes provisions for parking of two cars where there's already two cars allowed on the, or provided for on that site. There's a garage that I almost assume will be knocked down and then parking in front of that. So I think we've increased the, the sort of parking car park load within the corner of that. And I'd like to point out at this point that that jitty, that little alleyway, is used quite extensively for a lot of the villages that are going and taking their sort of primary school kids up to Western Lane School. Okay, so it's, again, I understand it at both ends of the day, but nevertheless, there are, you know, substantial amounts of people that have they've got a safe walkway at the moment. They can go up through that jitty, across Hemsworth Drive, and then into the park. Um, and that's quite extensively used. So two points I wish to object against is one is the sort of increased traffic um, and the sort of um, construction that will happen by at the end of the, the path there. And probably more importantly from my own point is, is what's happening to that the, the lengths of hedges that are bound in the property at the moment. Thank you. Done? Okay, thank you. If you yeah. just knock your button off, please. Thank you. Are there any points of clarification? Councillor Tromans. Thank you, Chair. Um, sorry, you said the plans aren't exactly representative of how it is on the ground. Um, when I've looked, been passed and whatever, are you talking about at the front of where the new house will be? Because I, I couldn't quite see how they were going to squeeze two car parking bases on there, but, or are you talking about some other aspect? A bit of both, really. One, yeah, that's one of my objections. I can't say they're going to put two car parking spaces on there either. Um, but equally, no. If you look at the sort of the, if you look at the plan where the, on the sort of bottom right hand corner where the, the the boundary line seems to run in a nice straight line across the back of the Western Lane properties and Hemsworth Drive, it, where our hedge is, if you like, it sort of jinks in and out a little bit, and it's difficult to understand. Who actually owns the hedge? Now, I'm, I'll take advice that boundary um, discussions are sort of long and hard fought within the council. Um, so it's just, it's, but it's not that straight line, if that makes sense. Is, is, are there any other points of clarification? No. Uh, Mr. Sahota. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, members. Um, The MPPF 2019 states that there should be a presumption in favour of sustainable development and that for decision taking this means approving development proposals that accord with an up-to-date development plan without delay. 
This proposal will provide a new dwelling in a sustainable location which will provide good living conditions for future occupiers without unacceptably compromising the living conditions of existing residents or the character of the area. Um, I have circulated, um, well, I, I sent an email which addressed all of the objections that had been received uh, and I hope that's been circulated to members. So I won't um, reiterate all of those. However, I will just uh, go over briefly uh, in terms of Mr. Elson's concerns. Um, firstly, in terms of the hedge, uh, there are absolutely no intention to remove uh, any part of the hedge save for the 10 metre strip which is required for the side elevation of the proposed dwelling. Um, the hedge is considered to be a pleasant feature for the property. It's a good security feature and it will be undue expense to remove it and replace it with uh, a formal uh, man-made uh, boundary. And therefore, there is no uh, proposal to remove that. If the council considers that a condition is required to um, maintain that, that, that is uh, acceptable. Um, in terms of uh, parking um, in that area to the front, um, there's ample parking um, every time I visit the property uh, and have, have been there, there's always been spaces. It was originally there uh, for when there was a, a local shop, which has um, long um, been converted into a residential property. Um, most of the properties in that area have off-street parking, and therefore this is that area there in the parking is all excess for, for, for overflow parking, if you like, and the Highways Authority have raised no objection in terms of that. Um, in terms of uh, safety concerns about the the, uh, the alleyway, uh, in terms of the school times, um, the access to the proposed dwelling is uh, is using the existing access uh, that is currently used for uh, 25, um, and therefore there won't be any increased um, movements or parking in that particular area next to the alleyway because that will be used for the proposed dwelling. In terms of the parking for number 25, that will be in the area to the front, uh, which is away from the alleyway, so there won't be any issues in terms of public safety uh, for use of the alleyway. Uh, th thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Are there any points of clarification? Councillor Tromans. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I'm a bit confused now because it, it sounds like there aren't going to be, from what you're saying, two dedicated spaces at the front of the new develop uh, the new building. There are there are going to be two dedicated off street spaces for the proposed dwelling. There are no off street parking facilities for number twenty five. They they will be parking in in the area to the front, uh, which is away from the alleyway. So did they have ability to park off street before number twenty five? Yes. So the net effect is that there's going to be on street parking that there wasn't before. Correct, but there is as I said, there is capacity for that, and the highway authority have not raised objection. Just to be clear, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Smith. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, just to clarify the situation with the hedges, I, I get that the side hedge is going to go on the walkway because the building will come up to that boundary, which pretty much mirrors the other end at Hemsworth. Um, I think the point... Oh, was it? No. Try turning... Right. That one. That one. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I think the point that was made by the other speaker was concerning the rear hedge that separates your property from his, and I didn't hear you say anything about that hedge. I'm wondering if that's going to be retained. A absolutely, there's no intention to remove that hedge. Okay. Okay. Did you want to respond to that? Uh, no, I just, I just re remembered another point that Mr. Alton made okay. in, in terms of um, the construction process. Well, um, you, you've kind of had your okay, so moment, so to speak. It would have been useful for perhaps. But, um, <coughs> are there any other points of clarification? No. Darren, anything at the moment? Okay, in that case, to enable debate to take place, can I move... The recommendation, which is a grant planning condition subject to the condition printed. Is that seconded? Can I, just before I bring in any member, could I ask, because it seems to be quite an important point about the hedgerow, and I think wherever possible we should protect those. If it's not already conditioned for that 
section of hedgerow, can we condition it to be protected? Um, yet yeah, there is a landscaping condition on there, condition five, but we could we could strengthen that and add some wording to that to um, basically protect the hedge as well, if if members were minded to. Okay, so uh, I'll, I'll put it to the committee, regardless of what the decision come, uh, eventually comes, you're happy that we in- include the strengthening of that condition about the hedge row? Yes. Okay, right, thank you. Um, any member? Councillor Smith. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Chair. Uh, just one point, question for Darren, actually. Uh, the point's been made about the um, walkway and the dangers of construction right up to that walkway. And that is a well-used walkway by a lot of dog walkers and also children going to school. It's not that wide, and if they're going to be building right up to that boundary, would they not need permission of county for that? And how would that work in terms of... Um, Safety if they're laying bricks to a full height right by the walkway. Um, yeah, it, 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 they, they may well need consent from the highway through the Party Wall Act or so on. It's not a consideration of the planning application, uh, but there are likely to be other legislation that covers that, such as Party Wall Act, health and safety legislation, and so on. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Councillor Wilson. Thank you, Chair. Um, Having listened to a lot of the concerns expressed, it sounds to me like a lot of those, unfortunately, are private law matters rather than issues which the planning committee can get involved in. I understand it's frustrating. Boundaries and boundary treatment usually are um, emotive issues in one way, shape or form, but they're usually private matters which, unfortunately, you either have to take matters into your own hands with the courts or get legal advice on. That isn't something that we can do through this committee. I understand the concerns, but unfortunately everything that I've heard and everything that I've read in the, in the paper it doesn't give me a planning objection to base a refusal on. So as much as I can understand some of the frustrations, I mean, I've seen developments in my own patch where there's a, there's a jitty and people are built right up... It's a jitty between Meadowside and, and Fairway. They've, they've actually built right up to the... Edge and people have still been able to use the jitty going backwards and forwards. So it's not beyond the wit of man to try and do these things. There will be some disruption, but it will hopefully, if the de- applicant wants to get this development built, be a short-term inconvenience so that the house will be developed. Because I'm sure it's in their best interest to get the house developed as quickly as possible too. So I can't see any reason for refusal, Chair, so I will have to vote for it. OK. If there's no other member, the... Recommendation which has been moved and seconded is to grant planning permission. All those in favour of that? That's unanimous. Thank you. That's approved. With that extra strengthening of the condition. (coughs) Okay, if I can ask you to move on to item number four. Item number three was withdrawn. Which is 31 Plough Hill Road, Nuneaton. I feel like we've been here before, but there you go. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> this application is a cross-boundary application for ten dwellings, with the majority of the works being in North Warwickshire Borough Council's area. The proposal would involve the demolition of the existing residential property at number 31 Plowell Road, some of which is within this borough. The proposed access is also within this borough, as is one of the newly proposed properties. North Warwickshire Borough Council approved their section of the proposal on Friday the 8th of November. The key issues to consider are the principle of the development, the impact on residential amenity, the impact on visual amenity, the impact on highway safety, flooding, drainage and air quality, and any potential planning obligations. In regard to the principle of development, the site has a previous outline approval for 12 dwellings back in 2013 and an outline for 10 dwellings in 2018. 
The previous outline also approved layout, appearance and scale, and with significant changes to these required by the applicant, a full permission is now being submitted. It is considered that the principle, at least, has been established given the history of the site, and notwithstanding this, it would represent an efficient use of land within the existing urban area. Of the proposed ten dwellings, only plot three is within this borough, and the property closest to the scheme is number 39 Plowhill Road. The distance between this new house at plot three and the side of number 39 is just under 19 metres, and this is over the access road and therefore meets with the Council's adopted distance standards. It is considered that there will be, there will be no unacceptable impact on residential amenity um, as a result of the development. In regard to the impact on visual amenity, only the facade of plot 3 and the access is in this borough. The frontage highlighted blue above will be within this borough. The design of the proposed dwelling is logical, with a good amount of de detailing including um, headers and sills um, and traditional features such as the chimney. Overall, it's considered that the development within this borough is acceptable in terms of its impact on visual amenity. In relation to the impact on highway safety, county highways were consulted and they responded with no objection subject, subject, sorry, subject to conditions which are proposed to be added to any approval. The county, flood the county flood risk team were consulted as part of the proposal and responded with no objection on surface water flooding grounds. The borough's environmental health team have confirmed that, that the proposal is far enough from either of the existing air quality management areas so as to have a potential impact on either of those. It is therefore considered that the impact on flooding and air quality is not significantly detrimental to warrant a refusal. Since the net gain in houses is only nine dwellings, since there is one house on site, uh, which is to be lost, no planning obligations can be sought. In conclusion, the application is recommended for approval, subject to the conditions set out on the agenda. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. Um, in which case, to enable debate to take place, can I move the recommendation, which is to grant planning permission as printed? Is that seconded? Thank you. Any member? Councillor Wilson. Thank you, Chair. I did have a, a question for the officers, although I suspect, given that they've told me that, well, told us that their North Warwickshire's planning committee have dealt with it on the 8th of November, I suspect the answer will be no. Um, looking at the layout, given that it is a funny shape as well, I was having concerns about permitted development rights and expansion of the properties, uh, mm. particularly given that Plough Hill Road is also a very busy road as well, um, and that layout on there where sometimes you can't get a fag packet between some of the cars parked up on Plough Hill Road, but th the way that it's laid out, I would have concerns about possibly people expanding the properties. Given that it's a cross-council application, is there any way we could um, remove permitted development rights or do, or is it now the end of the matter now that North Warwickshire have decided on their bit? Um, yeah, uh, we could only really determine the part that's within our borough. Um, that being the case, there are no uh, residential gardens within our area. There is a side of plot three. Um, so removing permitted development rights from that wouldn't really achieve any great um, benefit. Um, yeah, I, I believe there is a there is a condition on on there already, which is from the the North Warwickshire one, which does restrict PD um, permitted, permitted development. So I believe it's already covered. So right, uh, right. I just want to be clear on this, and although it is part of it by them. You're saying that the condition they've got on theirs will apply to ours as well? Or? And this condition 11 on our agenda. It's already on there? Yeah, so, so oh, right, the, okay. the conditions are replicated on both. Um, it was for, for clarity purposes that the conditions are the same on the two. If this gets approval, the conditions will be the same on the two permissions. Um, okay, thank you, Chair. 
I'm sorry, I'm going to just push it a little bit further because I'm not clear on it, on, on number 11. That doesn't say permitted development rights be removed so people would have to come back here. Or is it just a jargon that I'm... It, it's planning jargon. It's basically, Condition 11 is referring to Class A, B and C. Class A is ex any extensions to, okay. right. to a property. That's okay, that's fine it's, then. It's, it's planning speed. It's just, yeah, <laughs> okay. I think that's covered then, okay. Uh, was there any other member? <coughs> Councillor Sergeant. Um, this is just a bit of a funny one actually, because looking at it, it's, um, you're saying it's partly in North Warwickshire and partly in uh, Nuneaton and Bedworth, so you, does that mean that there'll be two sets of refuse van uh, trucks going and collecting the r rubbish, or will one pay the council tax for that and the next door will pay the council tax for North Warwickshire? Could be. I'm not sure how they work out council tax banding, to be perfectly honest. Most of the sites in North Warwickshire, so I imagine for ease purposes, they probably just would all be collected by North Warwickshire. Um, but that said, I, I'm not but in any means an expert on, on council tax, I'm afraid. And the boundary's tight all along there, isn't it? So I guess they'll either have an arrangement or one will do their own and one will, the other one will do theirs. Uh, Councillor Longdon. It was just on that chair. I do know for a fact that they work cross boundary. Yeah. So uh, North Warwickshire might pick up there, and then Interbeds might pick up on another one. So it's like a quid pro quo, quid pro quo yeah. situation. Okay. Uh, so it's, it definitely will happen. Somebody will decide who picks it up. Okay, that's useful. Thank you. Uh, so the recommendation, which has been moved and seconded, is as printed which is to grant planning permission. All those in favour of that? Again, that's unanimous, thank you. Which takes us on to, I believe, our last item of the meeting, the land to the rear of Willis Grove Bedworth. This application is a full planning application for the erection of a four-storey building to provide nine two-bedroom apartments with undercroft parking at land to the rear of 32 to 35 Willis Grove, Bedworth. <coughs> Excuse me. The proposal site is a roughly triangular piece of land which is bounded to the northeast and southeast by a mixture of one metre and two metre fencing and trees providing boundaries to the rear of 32 to 35 Willis Grove and 29 to 37 down in Crescent. The western boundary is shared with network rail land and has a two metre high palisade fence. The key issues to consider in the determination of this application are the principle of the scheme, the impact on unstable land as a result of former coal mining, the impact on visual amenity and the impact on residential amenity and finally on highway safety. There are previous permissions on the site but these have now expired without being implemented. The land is not allocated for housing within the borough plan, but purely in terms of principle, it is felt that this resi a residential use is likely to be appropriate on the land. A previous application on the site was refused for its impact on potentially unstable land when a permission was applied for with no coal mining risk assessment, which elicited an objection from the coal authority. On this occasion, the application was accompanied by a coal mining risk assessment and the coal authority were consulted have, have, and have no objections to the scheme. In reference to the impact on visual amenity and the character of the area, the area is typified by a mixture of two-storey semi-detached properties with some single-storey garage blocks dotted around. The street scene in the area is entirely road-facing. With this in mind, the siting of the proposed block of nine apartments is considered to be somewhat contrived as it is to the rear of existing dwellings and there'll be no, there will be no dedicated road frontage. There would only be fleeting glimpses between the existing houses on Willis Grove and the small dedicated access road to the side of 32 Willis Grove. In view of this, it is considered that this backland development would be out of character and not in keeping with the existing layout of the area and therefore contrary to the council's design guide, leading to a significant loss of visual amenity. In regard to residential amenity, the proposal features new primary habitable windows to bedrooms and kitchens facing the rear gardens of the houses on Downing Crescent. 
This elevation is proposed to be only 1.5 to 2.5 metres from the boundary with these properties, and as such, the 7 metres required by the design guide is not met. This would lead to a significant loss of privacy to the detriment of the residential amenity of occupiers of Downing Crescent. There are no windows shown in the south elevation facing uh, the properties on Willis Grove, and therefore that distance standard is met. However, overall, there is considered to be an unacceptable impact of re on residential amenity to those occupiers of Downing Crescent. The proposed access is to be made on the narrow strip of land between 32 Willis Grove and the network rail land. County highways were consulted on the proposal and have objected to the scheme on three grounds. Namely, it has not been demonstrated <coughs> that refuse vehicles can safely access and egress the site. There is insufficient detail on how to access on how the access will be incorporated into the existing turning head, and it has not been demonstrated that sufficient forward visibility can be achieved in both directions, or that two vehicles passing each other would have sufficient space. It is considered, therefore, that it has not been demonstrated that there will be, not, there will be no severe impact on highway safety. In conclusion, the proposal is recommended for refusal for those various reasons as set out on the agenda. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Can I move the recommendation as printed? Is that seconded? Uh, and I just want to make one, well, not one, just a couple of quick comments. One, I can't believe that our housing people haven't made any representations, bearing in mind we've got gardens uh, in Downing Crescent that have slipped away because of the works that's been done on this land. Similarly, Network Rail had their embankment slip away because of the works done on here. They've had to take action against the owner of this land. And I actually think... If it were possible, and it probably won't be, this would be an ideal site for all members of this committee to visit as part of their training process, because you wouldn't believe it, even if we could send up a drone, just so you could see. I've got a catalogue of photographs of this site. Anyway, enough of me rambling on. It's been... We're looking on Google Earth right now, Jen. Well, it's probably fell away while you've been looking at it. Um, <laughs> It's been moved and seconded, refusal. All those in favour of that? That's unanimous, thank you. That was our last item. Thank you for your attendance and the debate and declare the meeting closed. <laughs>